All right. Hello and welcome, everyone. So I know it has been a little while since you guys have heard from me because I have been playing a ton of the Heart of Deimos. Uh, I've streamed many, many hours of it so far. And today was the first dev stream since the Heart of Deimos. And not a ton, a ton of stuff was talked about on this dev stream. So we're also going to kind of this is also going to be sort of an impressions video on where I'm at with Heart of Deimos right now and what kind of stuff is going to be coming up on the channel that I'm working on currently. So first and foremost, Art of Demos is out. Uh, my overall impressions for anyone that's curious is that I really like it. I think it's really good. And I think that it's really nice that DE is uh, implementing fixes to things that are either broken or balanced poorly really quickly. Uh, we saw a lot of economy changes pretty fast and a lot of the fixes that needed to happen have already happened. Um, so it, it was not a like fundamentally like broken launch. Uh, I think the new quest is really fun. I think the new characters are super good. Lots of good stuff happening in the heart of Deimos. However, we have some things to talk about from this dev stream. And the first thing is the thing that is probably actually the literal worst about the heart of Deimos. And that is Zaku. Zaku. I'm, a, I'm just gonna go ahead and say it. They're absolute fucking garbage. However, on the plus side, they have already planned a dev workshop and like a community based thing to buff Zaku. They need it in the biggest way imaginable. Um, from what I've been looking at with Zaku, uh, I think this is the Warframe that has been the actual worst at launch, like of any Warframe that has released. I think the launch version of Zaku is maybe the worst for entering into the power level that it's entering into. Obviously, whenever like Frost released or something, the power level of Frost is much lower than the power level of Zaku, but the power level of the game is astronomically higher than when Frost released as compared to where Zaku was released, and Zaku is very, very bad. Um, all of their powers have bad points. Uh, they have one ability that is like a defense strip ability that is mediocre, uh, and it's just very not great. Uh, I think this Warframe looks fantastic, but I, I really hope, I really hope it can be pulled together into something more usable because it is, it is bad, bad right now. So for that, uh, coming up, I'm going to be doing a rework video for Zaku instead of a review video, uh, with these like big announced, like dev workshop changes and stuff definitely already coming. And we already know about it. It's not really very important for me to do a review of this Warframe. Because I think everyone's on the same page with it's bad. Um, but yeah, like I'm going to be doing a rework video for it to try and make the abilities of Zaku better. Uh, and just feedback of my own, as you'd expect. And that stuff's going to be happening. Moving on, uh, Infested Kit Guns. So Infested Kit Guns, we know, were announced to be on the way. Uh, they look pretty cool. I think they look nice. Uh, they are, like, you know, they're, they're kind of what you'd expect. Uh, based on like the aesthetics of the heart of Deimos, there's like weird egg launchers and it's all, you know, they're kit guns, except for from a horror movie, basically. Uh, and they're, they're neat. Hopefully they're good. Obviously the secondary kit guns that we have right now are extremely powerful. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see if these can kind of follow on with that. And it'll also be interesting to see if any of these make a decent primary kit gun, because the primary kit guns are not fantastic. So there's that. Uh, I think they look cool. Hopefully they end up actually being good. Um, moving on. We have some additions to the Heart of Deimos that are on the way, which is basically just some additional enemies and wildlife. I have one of them here. Uh, this is one of the new wildlife things that we're going to be able to capture, and there will be floofs of it. It's got a big chest mouth. It's like an unevolved Grendel. Uh, so basically... There's going to be more conservation, which I know people are not very excited for because there are big conservation problems on the launch of Heart of Deimos that have been pretty much remedied now, I'm going to say. Uh, but then in addition to that, uh, there are going to be some other enemies. They got they got some they got some Osprey looking enemies that are going to be jumping in here and stuff. And that stuff all seems good. Like the enemy variety, I think, on Heart of Deimos is already great. The new infested enemies are fantastic, but adding more probably isn't going to hurt it any. Uh, so I'm looking forward to that. Uh, and then we have some Necromech stuff. So the Necromech is pretty cool. Uh, it has been pretty hard to acquire for a lot of people due to the parts of the Necromech falling out of world uh, up until a very recent patch. However, 
I was able to put mine together and I'm just going to like show it a little bit and uh, talk about my kind of impressions of what's on there uh, in a second in this video. But just to talk about really quickly, uh, today they launched tradable pieces for this. So if you have extra pieces of the Necromech, they're probably going to be worth a pretty good amount of platinum while the people that want the Necromech are trying to get it. So if you have extra pieces, I would highly advise you to sell them as soon as possible because I think that market is going to dry up really fast. Um, but yeah, the Necromech basic impressions, really fun, has a couple of issues that could be really easily sorted. Uh, there is a second mech that we are going to be getting uh, probably relatively soon. Uh, we knew it was already planned. It was planned for like the launch, but just didn't happen. And that would tell me personally that it's going to be within like the next couple of weeks, probably. Uh, but if it's not, probably not a big deal. The current Necromech has some interesting points to it. Also, right now, it's limited to only the open worlds. But Scott was saying if they can get it to work and with some restrictions and stuff, it's going to be available everywhere. But it might not fit through all the doors, which is totally fine because it's absolutely ginormous. I will say, based on my time with the Necromech, Whenever it crouches, it gets pretty small, like it compacts itself down. So if they give it a crouch walk, it could probably fit in the vast majority of places in the game. So that's kind of a consideration, maybe. Um, but yeah, the Necromech is neat. Uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more in a second here. Uh, general things, though. Other notes that I have here. Uh, these are not stuff that was really talked about in the dev stream too much, but just the helmet system and the new player experience stuff. So for this... We are going to come over to the actual game. I have Zaku here. Uh, so for the helmet system, the helmet system I have gotten access to yesterday. Uh, this system, of course, is boy in the wall. Uh, we have, I'm just assuming Nidus currently. There's about two hours and some change left on that. So I'm going to go with Larva first for anyone who is curious what I'm assuming first. And I'm going to be trying out uh, improving Protea and seeing how much better that can make Protea, even with the nerfed state of Larva, because I'm curious if even being nerfed down to eight meters, if it's still going to be quite good in a lot of situations. Uh, I'm at rank three with the current metamorphosis. Uh, some general things in terms of cost here. Uh, the cost is high. And I mean high, 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 high. File is by far the hardest thing to get um, because whenever we're looking at just the cost here, Argon Crystals is actually probably one of the easier things to feed to this for Bile. Um, like Copernix, it needs 15,000. Uh, Isos, it needs 400. It wants 1,000 Fresnels. Uh, five diluted Thermia, which seems really high. Morphix, if you've got a ton of them, that's great, but it needs 40 of them, uh, which is pretty rough. Uh, and like Thermal Sludge is not bad, and Somatic Fibers, if you happen to have a lot of them, because if you're if you're doing that really nice uh, Axie farm on Lua, you might have a good chunk of Somatic Fibers, but still pretty expensive. And Cryotic is very very many uh rounds of huracan is needed to feed this boy so the big kind of point of contention here is that bile is really hard to get as compared to kind of all the other resources uh that you need on the right side here in order to infuse abilities uh and subsume frames and like do the whole thing there uh, i think that like in pheromones and stuff we have options like uh, well, you, can, you can't, you can't, the, the costs are much cheaper here. It's like three chitinous husks and all that business. Uh, I do think that the, like, what is on bonus is pretty well balanced here. Um, so that's pretty good. Uh, but like some of these are going to be much tougher than others. Like biotics, I think is going to be a big point where a lot of people aren't going to have a great amount, uh, especially like ganglion is pretty easy to get right now because it's in the heart of Deimos. Um, and it's a relatively small amount that you have to give to Helminth in order to level it up. But this stuff is definitely not new player friendly. Like this is expecting you to have a horde of resources if you want to power level the helmet. With that being said, if you want to power level the helmet, I'm going to go over it really quick. If you have the resources for it, the best way to level up the helmet is Master Summon. This only requires 5% bile. It's the lowest of any I've seen so far, and you get it right away. It requires 12% calx and 6% oxides this is the easiest one to put on a frame you will get 300 ish experience every time you put this onto a warframe and you can instantly remove your infusions from a warframe so if you have the materials for it you can infuse this and uninfuse this over and over and over and over, and over to get xp for the helmet in addition to that 
beating the helmet gets you XP for it. So if you're looking at the list of metamorphoses and you want the other abilities, um, you can do that. However, I will say subsuming Warframes gives a metric shitload of experience towards these metamorphosis levels. So if you already have a bunch of Warframes lined up to feed to Helminth, power leveling it is probably not going to be super needed unless you're one of the people that's looking forward to using like Mark for Death um, or Expedited Suffering or you want to try out those Helminth specific abilities right away. Because you're going to get tons of experience just from subsuming. Like whenever I subsumed Nidus, it gave me like a level and a half. So if you're going to go through that train, you're going to be just fine doing that with probably only a little bit of infusion and stuff needed on the side to max helmet out over time. So the helmet system seems pretty good. Uh, the nerfs that went out for it don't seem to have really affected it too majorly. Um, Defy is even more dumpster, but like we knew that already. Uh, and yeah, there's that stuff. Uh, the new player experience, just to talk about it really quickly while I'm showing off the Necromech, uh, seems really good. It's definitely an improvement. I think it's a better intro to the game, although I think Vor gets like maybe less screen time than he needs to really be introduced as a character as he was in the original intro. But still, big upgrade overall that I think is going to be better for players entering the game to kind of have a cooler thing to see and be more engaged immediately because that cinematic does do a really good job of being exciting, I think. Anyway, Necromech stuff. So, uh, a few things about the Necromech. So, we have the Void Rig Necromech, and for this, uh, this motherfucker has 12 slots. So it's got four additional slots than you'd might expect than you might expect. And there are 16 mods in total. For that, it is still a 30 rank thing, to my knowledge. So it's gonna be pretty tough to fit all this in here without a lot of forma. As it stands right now, without a way to bring the Necromech into like regular missions such as like Hydron and stuff, it is gonna be a task to level this thing. So it's going to need a lot of forma if you want to max it out, and that's going to be a lot of stuff to do. That being said, uh, the Necromech is fun, and there's no mastery associated with the Necromech leveling itself. So, it being hard to level, not a pain at all. Uh, I've just been having a good time just running around with this thing, uh, and just like trying it out on various things. Uh, also, worth noting, whenever you build the Void Rig Necromech, you are given the Mausolon. The Mausolon is the default weapon of the um, mechs that you're going to see out in the field that you can control and stuff in the Heart of Deimos. And this weapon, once you can mod it, is absolutely fucking incredible. This is maybe the best arc gun in the entire game now. Well, it has operator. stats on stats and on stats. It is really, bar. really We're good. Uh, it has an incredible amount of damage. It's got heat by default. Uh, it's solid it's aoe it has an alt fire um which is a really really large amount of damage when charged up after you kill a few enemies it's it is fucking good uh it is absolutely fantastic uh, i think if you are someone who plays protea and you're one of the ones that's going with uh, her being able to restore arc gun ammo this may be your new go-to uh protea is very 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 good uh if you give her the mausolon uh, and i think that's going to compound whenever i put larva on protea as well um but yeah Super good weapon. I'm curious to try this out in Railjack just to see how good it is because it has been very, very solid. Uh, also, on top of the uh, Necromech stuff here, you have its four abilities, which are fine and whatever. But the thing I want to talk about is Guard Mode. Storm Shroud is your defensive ability, which I think is a little weak, but it's not maxed out yet, so I'll see. Um, guard Mode is very interesting. I have this at rank zero. It's just been unlocked, and it's an exalted weapon called the Archibux. This is like a mortar like weapon and if you are seeing these numbers on screen it does some fucking damage its damage total before crits is 121,000, and it has a hundred percent crit chance and a 5.4x multiplier that is hefty so whenever this thing goes into turret mode it will fuck some shit up like e even like relatively high level enemies it will fuck them up if you are using the right element um i think this is a really really interesting choice uh to have such a strong weapon on the necromech uh using this in some regular missions and like maybe even for profit taker and stuff is totally a thing i could see happening and being pretty good uh if the survivability on the necromech kind of gets to a good place 
obviously i don't have all the mods for it yet so it's hard to tell where the survivability is actually going to sit out um but yeah necromex super fun i'm really enjoying it uh it's been a great time to engage with so i would kind of suggest everybody grab one just for the fun of it more so than anything else its movement system is also fun uh the mods for it have been good so far i got pretty much only good things to say about the necromec uh it'd probably be a lot worse if it gave mastery because it's such a bitch to level um but yeah it's just like a fun side activity right now that is uh, a little hard to acquire but yeah anyway uh that is going to kind of do it for this video uh thank you for hanging out uh, i will be of course doing a bunch of builds videos with the helmet abilities being added onto warframes so if you're expecting helmet ability build videos that is going to happen as there are already even with the abilities i've unlocked so far some just raw improvements that you can make to frames and also i'm going to be going over how useful all of the helmet abilities are on all of the warframes with another big old chart um once i have access to all of them so thank you for hanging out and I will see y'all tomorrow. Thanks for watching, everybody.